Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be talking about resistors. Now, I'm not going to go through how to read the color code of a resistor and whatnot. I'm just going to discuss something that I've found a big issue with myself. So the resistors that I use in university are completely different to these resistors, which is the majority of the resistors that you buy online. So these resistors are super, super cheap. And as such, reading their color codes is near on impossible. Firstly, why are they blue? I don't like blue resistors at all. On my mat here, I can't see anything. So let's get rid of the mat, first of all, because I can't see nothing. Okay, let's bring you in closer. Cool. Okay, so can you see what colors those are? Which end is, is it top, bottom, which end is which? Because even if I give you the color code, so let's, let's take a look at the color code, right? So if you have the color code here, how are you going to determine, you know, which, which is top and which is bottom? Now obviously there's a whole bunch of apps that you can use but even when I'm using the apps what I find is that I type I start typing in the resistor color from here and then I get half a down and realize oh okay there's the silver line okay so you kind of have to look for the multiplier first to figure out which is top and which is bottom when there's supposed to be a gap between you know that the, the different lines are supposed to be separated so there's supposed to be a wider gap between the value bands and the tolerance band but it just isn't Cheap ones just don't have that. So, although most people say to memorize the chart, I'm personally just, I can't be bothered to memorize the chart. It's, it seems a bit pointless to me. Um, and I'm assuming that hopefully this convention of color coding them will just go and they'll just print 10 ohms on it instead of that. Because obviously the color codes worked for back in the days, but why do we still have color codes now. I suppose it's just probably a manufacturing issue. Anyways, you didn't come here for a history lesson. So, the way that I do with this is, bring it back up a bit. Take my multimeter, right? Turn it to resistance. Right, and I'll just start off with 200. Put it to 200 first of all, and then I go into the resistor and I just check. And so 10.5 ohms, right? So then what I do is I just take a pen and I just write on there. Let's do that now. 10 ohms. Cool. If I take these ones. Obviously, you can see here it's slightly it does say 100, which is nice. But a lot of the resistors I have, the val the, this value fades very quickly. So here I take another one let's see my multimeter and you can see 100 so let's do a higher value one um, we'll get a 10k one 1 million cool so these are 1 million so now multimeter just doesn't show anything obviously so when you get that one you just crank it up to 2k try again Nothing, maybe test. Nothing, okay. Crank it up to 20k. Nothing again. 200k. So now you got, okay, this is obviously a big ohm resistor. 2 million. And there you go. So what's that? 0 0.994 million ohms. Well, basically, as it says here, 1 million. So you just put one M. And that's not a very good M, is it? One M. Yeah, and so that's literally how I deal with my resistors. I don't bother learning the color codes and stuff like that. So what I do is I just keep my multimeter literally here on my desk. And usually whenever I'm doing anything on a breadboard, I'm going to be using the multimeter at some point anyways. So I just use it just to test resistors. It's rapid, it's quick, it's actually it's much quicker than putting 
color codes into the app and if you have memorized the color chart well good luck reading these because half the time brown purple <laughs> and red all look exactly the same so yeah that's how i do with the blue the cheap blue ohm resistors and if you're thinking why don't you just buy the more expensive resistors i'm a cheap guy look at my multimeter keep it cheap cool i'll see you guys in the next one peace